the 2022 Honda Civic Si. We're super stoked because we are in a performance car for the people. What are the first things that immediately jump out at you? The shifter and the steering. I think the steering is much improved over the previous generation. Like it is heavier, but there's still more feedback. I think they really dialed that in, but it's all about the shifter for me. The shifter is a 10 out of 10. This is, to me, the best shifter you can get that, you know, below something with a Porsche badge. It carries over the same 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder as the last generation, except it now makes 200 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque, which is... I'm sorry, that's less than the last generation Civic SI. Right, which is incredibly unusual given the fact that automakers typically want to go bigger and better each generation, so we're getting a little bit less for more money, but more on that later. One thing that does not change is the manual transmission. It's still a six-speed manual, and that's the only option. No DCT, no automatic, at least on the SI. I think a lack of DCT might be a thing that some enthusiasts, aka me, care about. Um, but the good news is to make up for that, they ripped some of the stuff from the Type R in the last gen and actually brought it to the SI. Uh, my favorite of which is rev match. So someone who's been driving manual for a very long time, the rev match won't make a huge difference. But if you're starting out and you want to learn manual and you want to have a car that you can start at zero, just a newborn manual driver and get to a full pro, you don't need to change cars because you can yeah. start with the rev match and then really dial in your skills as you build up your uh, time with the car. The actual throw is 10% shorter than before. It's not the gearbox from the Type R that's slightly different mechanically speaking, but they refined this. They made it a little bit punchier, a little bit better, and it's easy to learn. So if you're somebody who's getting into a performance car for the first time in your young 20s, like this is your first adult car, it's easy to get there. The revs spike a little quickly, but it, it's super fun to learn uh, as a manual. They said that they reworked the entire driving experience. And they sure did. In terms of like how it drives, the chassis, I feel like because it is a longer wheelbase in the new generation Civic, um, it does handle better. And honestly, there's more grip up front. I think the only other really important pieces of hardware, we have uh, disc brakes at all four corners. This has the optional summer tires. You can get standard all seasons, but in warmer climates, AKA California in the winter time, you can stick with those uh, summer tires. You're better off running the summers all year than just getting winter tires because the grip from the summer tires is excellent. The brakes, I mean, they hang on, right? Like there's no immediate fault. I think if you do take this to a track, you're eventually going to run into issues. Obviously Type R and Integra will have Brembo brakes on it, which are going to be the, the bigger piece of kit, but these actually do okay and the pedal feels decent. Now, another major change to the new SI, the revs climb up like crazy. Yeah. In a canyon setting like this, it's no problem. I will happily abuse this car and bang off the rev limiter and just drive it really aggressively. But around town, you try to make some passes, you try to overtake on the highway, and it's a bit of a chore. Um, speaking of abuse this car, it's my turn. Pull the hell over, I want a shot at it. <laughs> now that we swapped drivers, I think this is the perfect time to show you how long it takes to find the rev matching system in this car. Gabe has decades of using a manual, so he doesn't like it. I love rev match, so let's turn it on. First menu screen, you gotta go over to vehicle settings, then a whole bunch of stuff pops up. You go into driver assist system setup, that's fun to say. Scroll very, very down to the bottom where it's basically hidden, turn it on, and then get out of there. I think this could be like one button on a steering wheel, but you know what? I don't build the cars, I just drive them. Down the mountain we go. Good luck to you. <laughs> um, so let's get to the finer points of the set. We talked about how it drives. Let's talk about how it looks because this, there's some controversy. Uh, I think the regular Civic sedan, the non-SI version is about as boring as can be. This one with the orange and those beautiful matte black wheels, suddenly I'm all about it. Like they made some legit changes in the design that I think actually wakes this thing up and puts a little spice in the recipe. And I think also like this car, you know, it's a sporty car, it's more on the affordable segment, um, but it walked the fine line of, you could buy this and walk into your corporate job without seeming like, and sticking out like the boy racer has just arrived. And it, arrive in a bright type R and people are gonna say, well, that man has issues. <laughs> but in the SI, 
you're totally fine. This flies under the radar, especially different uh, depending on what color you get. Because we talked about it being orange, yeah. but for me personally, it's all about the blue. You the like the blue. Orange is 395 bucks. It's one of the only options you can pay for on it, and I think it looks amazing. There's a lot of black on the outside, so they took the honeycomb grill pattern from the Civic Hatch, uh, and then they made the mirrors black. Like I said, the wheels are matte black, and then a little bit going on uh, at the back of the car. A really bright color complements it pretty well. The difference is when you open the door, the inside of the car is red. And red and orange don't go with each other. I know that makes me seem like I'm complaining about nothing here, but it's a little bit much to see a whole car that looks like a giant Cheeto on the outside and then everything's red on the inside. But I think it's so color dependent because blue on red works, white on red works, yep. black on red works. It's just orange that kind of sticks out in all the wrong ways. <laughs> and there's a lot of red. Except the back seat. Right, so you have like the red in the front, just like the Type R, but thankfully they're not like all red like in the Type R. It's like red, black, and then just black in the back. And it kind of just makes you feel like you can kind of see where the corners were cut. Right, yeah, the back seat doesn't match the front, which is a little bit strange. But you know what, overall the interior in this thing, there are some like really nice updates. The infotainment screen, so much better than before. There's an actual sound system in this car that plays music. I gotta say, the last gen Civic, it sounded like it was being played through a soup can. Like this is a legit Bose 12 speaker setup. It's good and it comes standard, which is good because they've raised the price on this thing. Civic Si, not too long ago, used to be $25,000 with one or two things you can put on top of it. Now it's north of 27,000. So I guess that really, begs a question, would you buy this with your own money? So I feel like that question is a little bit difficult mainly because of where the car is positioned price point relative to its competitors because I know I could spend a little bit more and get into a GLI. Is that a much better car? I would disagree. I think this, I, this, I would still pick this over a GLI. Yeah. But for example, we have the new GTI that's coming. We, we don't know how much that costs, but um, the price difference is the thing that bothers me where it's kind of like, would I spend a couple grand more and get into a more powerful car or do I save the money and take the shifter and this driving experience? I think for me personally- Or you can spend a couple grand less and get either a Hyundai Elantra N-Line or a Kia Forte GT. South of $30,000, this is still the one to have for me. I gotta say it. fun o meter out of 10. Ready? One, two, three, seven. Six. Okay. Six? Yeah. That's a little okay. harsh, man. Okay, so the thing is, I love the way this car drives up here. When you're going fast, it makes sense. It just, it's done really, really well. My, the only drawbacks for me are when you're around town, it feels a little bit like a regular Civic 90% of the time. So you're not really getting that excitement for me to say the funnel meter is like there. I will say, I drive supercars for my day job pretty much every week and I'm still having fun in this. Like this is still, even after doing all that, this is still a proper fun car that you're not getting shortchanged by buying a cheaper car. Yeah, I think that the best way to put it is that Honda still knows how to build a performance car for the people, even if they raise the price a little bit. The Civic Si is as good as it's ever been, if not better.